Okay, you guys, on this Resetter TV, I spoke with Brian Hoyer, who is an expert in all things Wi-Fi. So it's really important we talk about this right now because one of the things we know about Wi-Fi is that, or the, our whole technological world right now, is that it can suppress your immune system. So he's gonna talk about what is it doing to us cellularly and what, more importantly, what can we do to protect ourselves from EMFs, Wi-Fi, 5G, all of those things we discuss in this particular video. So enjoy, this is truly a gift at this moment in history. You gotta know this. Resetters, so we have a topic today that we have not talked about yet, and I am so honored to have my next guest, Brian Hoyer, to here to enlighten us on EMFs. So thank you, for starters, for being here, Brian. Yeah, I'm excited to be able to speak to your community, and hopefully I can contribute something that a lot of you have never heard of before. Yeah, and, it, and it's really sad how little we know about it, so I'm super happy to open up this conversation. And um, like we were talking about before the podcast started, it, we really, as a group of resetters, our focus is how do we heal our body uh, from the inside out? How do we tap into this incredible gift that we've been given to live in? And I always tell people that in today's age, we're literally living in the most toxic time in human history. And things have dramatically changed uh, in our environment. And one of those things is Wi-Fi and EMFs. And personally, I haven't brought this a lot to the attention of my community because I honestly haven't known what to tell people. So why don't you start off by giving us just a background on where do we sit right now with the Wi-Fi and EMF world? Sure. Yeah. And, you know, as a health practitioner, I'm a health practitioner myself. I studied nutritional therapy and I'm a, you know, awesome. I have a functional background. And so the question in your mind as a practitioner is always what's deviating from the natural pattern that human biology is used to. So yeah. that includes diet, your lifestyle, the modern toxins that we have. And one of those things is the energetic environment that we have. Just 200 years ago, we didn't have any electricity and we didn't have, you know, obviously radio towers, television towers, cell phones, and then all the smart devices that we have now, you know, things have kind of exponentially accelerated. Yeah. Even in the last 20 years, it's been insane. The amount of technology that we've, we've uh, been exposed to that has increased. And so, you know, as a, from a practitioner standpoint, you know, the goal that one of the goals that I had when I first started diving into this was, you know, I, I, I get what we put into our body and that makes sense, you know, get some nutrient dense whole food, put that into your body. Uh, but what the question that came up for me was when I, when I went to this lecture by uh, Dr. Dietrich Klinghart, who's the one who really opened my eyes to this problem was that it's also what we're putting our bodies into and the environment that can cause these voltage changes on a cellular level that can induce inflammation in the body through various biochemical responses with, you know, perioxynitrite and, and nitric oxide, that interaction creates these potent free radicals. So that's what actually causes the damage. But uh, what we have today is an exponential increase as the technology increases and more saturation of these frequencies. And it kind of is confusing for a lot of people because traditionally, like the, the modern physicist doesn't view uh, this non-ionizing type of radiation as detrimental or damaging because the traditional viewpoint is it can't break DNA bonds. Mm. And so it's not like nuclear radiation or gamma radiation or cosmic radiation, all the things that they know, like x-rays and things like that, that we know for sure cause damage to the body. But the secret of the matter is, and, and the real truth of the matter is that it does cause damage. It just happens more over time. Mm -hmm. and it, it raises these inflammatory markers that we can measure and we can see. And yeah. there's so many studies out there that are, that are showing this. And so, 
Um, yeah, it's part of it is because we can't see it, right? So, you know, like I could pick up, you know, a piece of Lucky Charm cereal and I could compare it to, you know, wholesome granola and I could see that there's maybe physically a difference. But the problem that we've got with, e with Wi-Fi and EMFs is you can't see it, yet it's damaging you on a cellular level. So talk a little bit about what exactly, let's start with what is the damage to the cells? Like what do we, what, what do we know as we stand right now that Wi-Fi will do to, to us on a cellular level? Well, we know from research from Dr. Martin Paul out of Washington State University that um, it does cause this uh, inflammatory cascade cycle called the, they call it, it's friend, like, it's called the no oh no cycle. Oh so yeah, like, no oh no, yeah. No oh no. <laughs> yeah. but, so the nitric oxide peroxynitrite cycle, and it's this this uh, voltage change that goes across the cell membrane that that opens the floodgate for calcium to get into the cell, and when calcium gets into the cell and there's a the presence of nitric oxide, it produces this peroxynitrite uh, free radical, and so it it has the potential to damage mitochondria it also creates carbonyl free radicals and and some other types of inflammatory responses that can kind of perpetuate in the body as you're continually exposed to these uh you know these different types of emf including wi-fi electric fields magnetic fields there's different frequencies that you can measure that have different equipment to measure them with and so all of them they found uh operate on a similar mechanism as far as the damage that it causes to the human body. And it's, it's something that is, has been studied. It's in the literature. Uh, there's a lot of special interests that don't want this information to get out there widespread. Yeah. But now the last three or four years, there's been some really large uh, multi-million dollar government studies. There's one by the National Toxicology Program a 25 million dollar study i think it was like 25 or 30 years that they did this and it showed clear evidence of tumors in the hearts and brains of, of rats and so you know a lot of these studies I, I you look at and they're always trying to look at this diagnosis of disease or looking for physical evidence of tumors and that's fine that's one way to look at the damage and what something is doing to the body but as we know in working with people and trying to get healthy uh, that's like the damage has already been done. If you're that far gone and you already got a tumor developed, right? It's yeah. it's pretty far down the line where the damage has been been happening for quite some time. Yeah. And so, what I mainly work with people on is how do we optimize the healing environment in your home so that we can wake up these dormant healing responses in the body, and you can have your health optimized, not just trying to prevent cancer 20 years down the road. Right. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, I think uh, we've heard the study that, or at least in the past, there have been studies out so much about how the tumor of, of Wi-Fi, you know, you put your cell phone next to your head, you're going to get Wi-Fi in the brain. We've heard that that has caused brain tumors. But what I've noticed about people is that you, there's like this disconnect, like, well, that could happen sometime in the future. And so my cell phone's so convenient. I don't really need to, I don't want to, I don't want to worry about it. But what I really want people to see, because we see it in our clinic, where we're dealing with some really sick people, that it's today, it's the Wi-Fi today that's giving them chronic fatigue and migraines and not allowing them to sleep. Uh, I deal with a lot of women with hormonal problems. So talk, can you, do you, can you reference any studies or talk a little bit more about what is it happening on a day-to-day -day basis? What symptoms are we typically seeing right now? Yeah, so even on a hormonal level, uh, you can think about how it impacts you just while you sleep. And, you know, it's causing a stress response in your body. If you just think about, you know, basic, basic physiology of the, of the body and the muscles and the cells, uh, calcium makes the cells, uh, the muscles contract, magnesium helps them to relax. And if you think about the way that electricity impacts the body, how do we restart a heart? We pump voltage in, it contracts mm. the heart, and then yeah. the heart relaxes, you know. So electricity is impacting our muscles and our cells in this really intricate, obvious way. And what we've done in the modern world is we've surrounded ourselves with electricity that's pulsating. And you can even put electrodes on your muscles and cause involuntary muscle contraction, right? 
Yep. So, so there's this stimulation that's happening on this low level, uh, these micro contractions happening all the time, and it's depleting us of our magnesium stores mm -hmm. and our in our mineral stores, causing all of these. Uh, you know, the minerals are the sparks of life in the cell, and so it's causing all of these interactions and the, these depletions all night long while we're sleeping when we're supposed to actually be replenishing that. And so it's not only causing those contractions. In many studies, it shows that it uh, elevates your cortisol levels. And that's especially problematic at night mm. because uh, when your cortisol is elevated, your melatonin goes down. Mm. And there's that antagonistic relationship with the two. Yeah, so yeah. When your yeah. melatonin is down, uh, you know, you can't sleep as deeply. But then also because it's also a potent antioxidant free radical scavenger, um, your brain is not able to detox as well. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and you know, the mineral thing that I, is so interesting is that we, we're fasting hundreds of thousands of people every month, and there are some real uh, consistent findings that we see, like things like hair falling out, and some people can get more anxious when they fast, some people get migraines when they fast, and it's easy for us to say, oh, that's a detox reaction. But what we started to really dive into in, our, in my community was understanding that our soils are so deficient of minerals. So you're already not getting enough, you're not getting the minerals from your food, and now you're in an environment where you're depleting yourself every single day by carrying your phone around and you're, everything that's Wi-Fi and, and cellular, and you're depleting yourself of magnesium. Yeah, I mean, I've, I, the more I work with people, the more I'm like, we have a major mineral problem. We have a massive mineral problem. And it's, I'd never thought to, com to connect Wi-Fi to that. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because it's just, you know, the human stress response, what your body perceives as a stressor, it's going gonna, it's gonna to prioritize dealing with that and using its resources in order to do that. Yeah. And so, you know, even, even just the basic, you know, I, I often tell people because this is such an issue that a lot of people are uh, intimidated by, often they'll worry about it or they'll just completely ignore it and, uh, and want to forget about it. Uh, but there's some people that worry so much that that can actually raise your yeah. cortisol levels. <laughs> yeah. And so there's a balance here yeah. with uh, being informed and making the right changes and then also kind of having this positive attitude about the whole thing that, hey, it's not the end of the world, even though it may seem like it because of the GMOs and the spraying and the, and the EMF and 5G and all these different things that are going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, but we have these communities like your community and many others in this natural health world where we are putting up a fight and we're, we're yep. you know, coming up with advanced ways to deal with, with these stressors and these toxins that are in our modern world. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So let's dive into how do we minimize our, the impact that EMFs are giving us? What you have a six step process or a six stressors that you tell people to look out for. Can you walk us through those six? Yeah. So we travel all over the United States and soon to be maybe even across the pond here all over the world. But we we go into people's homes and there's many common stressors that we find. And so we've identified six main things that we're looking for in people's homes that have different types of equipment that we use to measure. And so there's, and each of them have a different solution. And that's, that's the key thing because it's based on physics, real physics. Um, we have to use real physics as a solution to block and shield ourselves from this. And the goal is, is to recreate a ans more ancestral environment, especially in your bedroom and anytime your body is in a parasympathetic state. So when mm. you're eating, when you're sleeping, and also when you're detoxing. Interesting. So those are the most important times when you need to be in that relaxed state where your muscles are not contracting, you're not getting those voltage changes and the inflammatory response in the no ono oh cycle. Uh, your body's able to prioritize repair and healing and and doing the work that it was meant to do innately yeah. on, on its own. So we, we're the most vulnerable in those three times then to these kind of forces. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and so we really prioritize the bedroom when we're testing for these things. And the, if I can name the six stressors right now, it's electric fields, and that comes from the just the wiring in your walls or when you plug something in. 
Mm -hmm. uh, there's electricity that's that's emanating out from those cords because those cords are not shielded. Okay. Uh, there's magnetic fields, and that can come from a motor running, because uh, motor all motors have a magnet that's spinning and it's oscillating, and so there's this pulsation that happens back and forth. And the pulsation that happens with the magnetics is also happening with the electricity. Mm. Our electricity pulses 60 times per second back and forth. So that's 120 times back and forth per second like this. Wow. And that pulsation we've never had before in the history of mankind. So uh, that's what is kind of happening on a cellular level. There's this constant pulsation that's, that's happening. And you can see it if you look under a microscope and you're around electric fields, the cells are constantly kind of going like this yeah. all over in the microscope. And that's not necessarily normal. There's normal activity of the cells where they're moving around, but then there's also this, you know, and, and a lot of people who are studying these things, they just look under a microscope and they think that that's normal. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> so so the, the electricity, the magnetic fields, there's also dirty electricity, and that's when there's thousands of wireless frequencies that are riding on the line, electrical lines and the ground wires of your house. And then there is the uh, geopathic stress that's radiation that's coming up from the earth. Okay. And then there's the wireless that we all know about from the cell phone, radio towers, our Wi-Fi router, cordless phones, baby monitors, those types of things. And then the last thing is artificial light. Mm. So light is on the electromagnetic spectrum. It's in the visible spectrum. Uh, and the artificial light, there's two things that we test for. We test for the spectrum of it. So uh, we try to match the outside environment with the indoor environment as far as what the spectrum is. So mm. most, most indoor lighting like LEDs and fluorescents are more spiking in the blue range and not enough in the red range, which is, I have this red light on right here. Yeah, we love red lights. Yeah, the red light is amazing. Yeah. So for multiple reasons. And then the, the other part of artificial light that we test for is the flicker. And so the flicker is kind of an interesting demonstration because you can see this meter right here has a little photo sensor on the back of it. So this is one of my flicker meters that I bring on assessments with me. And I put a I purposely put a flickering light up here, mm. up there. Okay. So kind of here. Turn my red light off. You can hear that go up higher. Oh my gosh. Wow. And I'll turn it back on and it goes down a little bit. Wow. So the red light's combating it. It's like cutting it off. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's filling in the gaps of the flicker because it's an incandescent light source. Fascinating. If I point this toward the daylight outside, yeah. it's almost nothing. nothing. It's actually just a hiss. Wow. So, so does that, does the flicker mean that your light is actually flickering or it's just the, the energy that's coming off of it? It's the, it's actually flickering of the, of the light. So the buzzing sound is the jostling back and forth yep. 120 times per second. So even if, even if my brain doesn't perceive that flickering, my eyes are actually constantly adjusting to that. And, um, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but one of the tests that I do for adrenal stress or adrenal fatigue with, uh, with people that when I was really, you know, doing my uh, health practice more is the pupillary reflex test. Mm. So you take a flashlight in a dark room or a little, little light, like actually I have one right here. Yeah. You just take a little light like this one and, uh, and you just in a dark room and you you put it right on their pupil and then you see if the if the pupil contracts and if it can hold that contraction if it can't hold that contraction then it's a historically in a lot of the medical journals and the functional testing that that we've done uh that is a sign of adrenal fatigue yeah. and adrenal stress yeah and so i think that a big reason for a lot of this adrenal stress with people is because we're constantly spending hours and hours every day underneath this artificial light that's constantly flickering and yeah. the eye never gets a chance to rest. Oh, interesting. And even if our brain can't perceive it, our eyes are constantly adjusting to it. And then if you're thinking about it in that, in that way, physiologically, the eye is connected to the hypothalamus and pituitary right in the middle of your brain. And through that axis with the adrenals, 
you you kind of get stress in the hypothalamus pituitary and then that affects the adrenals interesting interesting so it, so i'm thinking about my bedroom as you're talking and i'm like okay so what if if what can you do like if you're just if, if you're listening to this podcast you're like what can I do it, it immediately? Do you unplug everything when you go to sleep? Do you turn off routers? Like, what can you do? Yeah, so there's some easy things you could do right away to help lower your exposure. Uh, you know, you can turn off your Wi-Fi router at night unless you're surfing the internet in your sleep. You don't really need your Wi-Fi yeah. router on. And then uh, you can unplug things next to your bed. That will help lower things. Pull, pull your bed a little bit away from the wall. Um, ultimately, though, the thing that helps the most is to to actually block the electricity coming from the walls and also reflect away the wireless signals coming from outside because we have so much exposure now. Um, if you get cell phone reception in your house or you can get a, a radio station in your house, then you have billions, if not trillions of time more exposure trillions of times more exposure than what your ancestors had to these types wow. of oscillating frequencies. Wow. And so what we do is we have a special paint that we recommend when we come in to a person's house and we help you design how do we paint and shield this room. There's a shielding fabric that we put over the windows uh, to block the frequencies from outside. Or you can actually put a, a shielded canopy over the bed and these oh. These materials, like the paint is a graphite and carbon-based paint, zero VOC, and then the the shielding material is a silver and cotton-based material. Interesting. So, so, and you, you, I went to your website. You've got some of this stuff on your website, so people could could purchase it and do it themselves. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. So you can you can purchase the the fabric on the website. The paint we actually don't sell on the website because we found that if we did do that then we would have to follow up and help people with designing it we just don't have time to help them get the shielding of their room done okay. correctly yeah you can actually do it wrong uh so it's uh we've kind of reserved the paint for people that we've done assessments for yeah and, uh, and do you do assessments all over the nation like will you go into anybody's home and assess it yeah, so I have about five uh, consultants that I've trained, and and then I also go around to people's homes, and we consult with them all over the country. We were in like over forty right. different states last year, wow. and you know I'm I'm actually getting ready to do a tour. I'm speaking over in uh, Los Angeles at the Upgrade Labs conference there. Nice. And and we're I'm taking the family. I've just got a I've got about a week and a half old son, that that we just had, um, you know on February 15th. Congrats. And, uh, and I have three daughters ahead of him. Oh my gosh. So, so we just got our son. Yeah, nice. And, and we're gonna be traveling across the country. So I also bought this little, uh, little trailer that we're gonna shield and we're just gonna sleep in that because we don't like going into the hotels with all the toxins and the, the poor lighting and everything. Amazing, so. amazing. Yeah, so well let's go, since we're on the topic of kids, you know, I, a lot of resetters that in our group are parents, and I can tell you as, a, as the mom of a teenager, of two teenagers, it's, you know, what can we, how can we help them with their phone? Uh, turning off, the, putting on airplane mode, does that do anything? Yeah, airplane mode is wonderful. It's better than any phone pouch that you can get um, or shielding device that you can put on your phone. I'm not really a big proponent of the stickers and different things that you put on your phone because I... I measure everything with my equipment. Yep. And so um, even though I think some of that stuff may have some kind of support for the body and dealing with the stressor, what I found in my testing is it doesn't really remove the stressor itself or transform it in any way. It still shows the same on the meters. But if you get something that's actually physically blocking, like mm -hmm. this, this is a phone pouch that my wife made me that has a stainless steel infused fabric in it. Okay. Um, that will actually help block the the signal of the wireless. So you would do put it on airplane and put it in the pouch. Do them both. Yeah, that's what I do. But airplane mode, if you can just get your kid to do airplane mode, I mean, kudos to you. That's that's great. Um, and really, when it comes to teenagers, uh, the best, the very best thing that you could do for any teenager is to just get them to sleep in a shielded space every single night yeah 
it's not like you have to force them to, you know, even little kids, I'm always like trying to get my kids to eat bone broth and vegetables and, and all these things. And they don't always like it, you know, but at least I know every single night they're going to be sleeping for, you know, 10 to 12 hours in their shielded room and yeah. their body's going to have all those dormant healing re responses woken up and they'll be able to repair and detox and get the lymphatics draining. And so that's something that's, you know, compliance is almost a hundred percent as long as they're sleeping in that room and everything's and the windows closed and, and everything like that. So uh, that's the most important time for people to be protected. So if you can just set up their space to where they're healing every night, then their body can actually handle more of the stress during the day Amazing. as long as it gets that time to heal and repair at night. Amazing. Okay, so sleeping in a shielded space. I, I, now, like when I get off this interview, I'm going to go to your website and look. So is there like, there's like drapes and things like that would be easy to find on your website? Yeah, we sell the fabric in in rolls so it's like a eight foot tall roll and we sell it by the yard okay and uh we have that on the website there's uh you know we haven't talked about some of the other uh emfs in in extensively yet but there's a whole house filter for dirty electricity that actually will help uh lower the cost on your electrical bill if, especially if you have a lot of motors running like you have a mm -hmm. lot of fridges and where you store your grass-fed beef and and broths and vegetables all the things, and things you're like doing that. for your health yeah so <laughs> so there's a filter it goes on your uh house and it filters out the entire house and this is something that's measurable it's not a harmonizer or anything like that you can actually measure it with a meter and you can hear the electricity on the line go way down interesting so that's that's another thing that's another and then, option. yeah there's all different there's different kinds of smaller products on on the website too that can help with various things as well and do you think it's helpful that I, I'm looking behind you, it looks like you've got several of those little meters. Do you find that it's helpful for people to grab a meter? I saw that on your website as well. And you could go and just, and just look and, and identify what, where the most of the EMFs may be coming from. Yeah, so there's one meter that I have on my website that is this one. It's called the ESI 24. Okay. And it actually measures three different types of EMF at once. And I like this for somebody who's just starting out because it's the only one I've seen that measures them simultaneously. So you can actually take it around your house if you just turn it on and you can kind of start to understand the nature of the different types of EMF, whether it's magnetic, electric, or wireless. Like your, wi like your Wi-Fi router it's going to be obviously producing a wireless signal, but when you get close to it, you're also going to notice that the electric fields go up. Mm, okay. And if you get close to the transformer on your wireless router, there's a magnetic field that comes out a, a certain distance. Okay. And so you can kind of start to like, if you put this by your bed, you notice you know, like a lot of people's alarm clocks are too close to their bed or they have a white noise machine that's creating a magnetic field that's going through their whole bedroom and causing like, uh, you know, 20 to 50 times higher reading than what we like to see in, in the bedroom. So, I, I've seen that there's like some sheets and stuff. Like, is it, what if you have like a little portable aircon unit in your bedroom? Can you, can you put something on top? Is there like a blanket or something you can put on top of you? Um, basically, if you, if the room is shielded, you can have things plugged in on the other side of the room and you should be okay. You should be okay. Okay. Um, and then, like a lot, there is some products out there that are sleeping bags where you can just wrap yourself in like a shielding fabric. I personally don't like those as much because we work with a lot of people who are, um, who, who are chemically sensitive and also electrosensitive. And they tend to report that when they wear, when they wear those things or use those products, they feel worse in some instances because mm -hmm. of the exposure going on to the shielding material and re-resonating close to the body and into the body. So we like to have things kind of further away because that resonance phenomena happens anywhere from a few inches to like maybe a foot out mm -hmm. okay. from, from the shielding material. Okay, and, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what else in our home do we need to look at? And then I want to, when we get done with the home, I want to talk about 5G because I'm in Silicon Valley and I can tell you this has been a hot topic and everybody's got the new phone ready to go. So. But what else in our home can we do? Turn the router off at night, put the shielding up, make sure the phone's on airplane mode. 
Do, should you go as far as unplugging your electrical? Like, does that make any sense? I mean, you can. Uh, it'll help reduce some things, uh, especially if you have an electric blanket. Don't leave that plugged in all night. A lot of people we go to that, that have electric blankets or a, even a bed that plugs in to incline it and move it up and down. Yep. Um, that stuff should be unplugged. Like, just, you know, just move it to where you want it and then unplug it. Yeah. And there's some little uh, remote plugins you can get where you can actually just shut off the power to the cord with the push of a button. No. Oh. It don't, only emits Wi-Fi when you press the button. Okay. So those those are what we recommend for like lamps in your in your bedroom and if you have a bed a bed that plugs in that that moves or like sleep number beds often have that. Um, so those are some some basic things. Get the Wi-Fi off at night. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of issues with magnetic fields if there's wiring errors in the house. Okay. Um, dimmer switches create a lot of magnetic fields. You also want to get rid of any of the fluorescent light bulbs, not only because they create dirty electricity and high magnetic fields, but they are also a source of if that breaks, you got mercury vapor everywhere. Uh, oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, and we, we spend a lot of our work here at my clinic detoxing mercury out of people. It's, mm -hmm. That is a major health issue for sure. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Okay, talk about 5G. What do we need to know about 5G? Okay, so 5G, there's a lot of hype around this topic right now. And uh, I, you know, it's because of these uh, frequencies that we've never uh, had been exposed to before, supposedly. I think we've, we have been exposed to them from from satellites and different different things. We just didn't know and we don't have the tools to measure them. Yeah. And so we still don't have the tools to, to measure that that much uh, of them. And the tools that we have are very, very expensive, like in the range of fifty to $100,000 for one single meter that can measure these things. And so basically with 5G, they're planning to connect all of our devices together and make it so that they communicate with one another and you can gather all this data and uh, that in and of itself is problematic from a surveillance standpoint. But then there's also the fact that we have so much more saturation and exposure and then these uh, transmitters are gonna be going up on every post uh, yeah. much more frequently. Now, the thing that a lot of people are deceived by is they think that on every you know, block, there's gonna be a transmitter and they think it's gonna be a, at these higher frequencies, these millimeter waves or what they're called. And from what I've seen, it's not going to be that. It's just going to be more of the same frequencies with 4G and 3G. But I think those are almost worse because they penetrate deeper and can travel further. Mm. And so the, the good news about the whole thing is that um, we, can, we do have the technology to block this with the shielding paints and the fabrics and the things to do uh, in the bedroom and the, with those strategies. The issue, though, is that, you know, we're kind of at the point now in human history where if we are conscientious about our health, we have to do something. We have to shield the bedroom, yep. at we least. Think, yeah, and that's, you know, I would say that's one of the places I've gotten to with my family's health is like, we're spending, you know, more money to eat organic. We're, we're doing all, all the, we spend money on supplements and all the things like we are, we are willing to put our health first above anything else. And then you look at, I look at our EMF situation. I go, haven't addressed this at all. Like this is a big gapping hole that, that we need to address. So I absolutely agree with you. Why do you think countries, there's some countries like Belgium in Europe that totally banned 5G. Why do you think some countries are like, nope, not, you can't bring that in here? Well, I think uh, Europe is much more aware of these issues. All, like pretty much all the meters that I, that I get that are worth anything are made in Germany. Oh, interesting. And there's, there's one in France. This one's made in France. Or no, this okay. one's made in Germany, but there's a French company that, uh, that manages the manufacturing and so um they are that's the birthplace of building biology and uh measuring these types of electronics for human health reasons and so there's a much more of a tradition there of people knowing what it is uh having a familiarity with with uh the measurements and things like that and the the guidelines are actually the standards are much more strict over there 
Interesting. And so they, they kind of know that if, if 5G is implemented, it's going to increase our ex the exposure level exponentially, and it's going to go way beyond the standards that they already have. Right. So they've already like, you know, like they, they kind of know that if it's installed, it's going to go beyond the standards. So we should just ban it now. Yeah, interesting. And what about the new iPhone? I heard a lot of things around the new iPhone, the one with the fancy camera on it. Is it what's the difference there? So there was a, something, an article that came out about how it had a, a whole other level oh, yeah. of health ramifications. Yeah, so they found out that they were the new iPhone was not meeting the FCC requirements for being a certain amount of radio frequency. And that is a big red flag because their standards are so hot or so, uh, you know, broad lenient, yeah. and lenient that uh, it's, it was already too high before that. And now they've gone and pushed the levels again. And usually when this has happened in the past, when a phone goes beyond the limits of the FCC, they quietly raise the standards, you know, uh, like make them even more lenient uh, and say, oh, no, no yeah, we, we thought it was, but now because we changed the law, it's, it meets the standards. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. that's crazy. That's crazy. What do you think, I'm, as I'm listening to you talk, I'm thinking, this is such an out of control problem and no, it's not on anybody's radar. And I'm trying to envision, like, you know, like I said, we deal with so many sick people. I'm trying to envision what the impact this will have on the human race. Can, I mean, we're, you obviously, this is your business. This is what your passion. Like, what happens if we continue at the pace we're continuing with this technology? What do you think we'll see? You think we'll see more cancers? We'll see more chronic illness? What do you, what do you think will emerge from that? Well, I think as as practitioners, we kind of can look at the the biological mechanism and and make some conjectures and some guesses, and theorize about a lot of it. Uh, but what we have seen, even from a clinical standpoint, from working with with some different environmental medicine clinics that we've that we've uh, worked with a lot of their patients, or even Dr. Klinghart's patients, um, what, like what we see is people with autoimmune diseases. Mm. And, uh, and then children with autism and mm -hmm. Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, how it's affecting the brain. Because yeah. these uh, voltage-gated calcium ion channels that are, that are affected by this, they're concentrated in the heart and in the mm -hmm. brain. Yeah. And so those are the two areas that are gonna be attacked the most. But then any person that has the no ono cycle going on for any reason, that cycle's perpetuated by these, by these stressors. And so you could be on this perfect protocol uh, based on lab work or, you know, any kind of uh, way that you're determining that what a person needs. And it could be continually perpetuated by the inflammatory process could be continually perpetuated by something that like this that you're not really thinking about because it's yeah. already starting. Yeah, yeah. I can't in the brain. The poor brain is already under siege from the other toxins around. So. What do you think? We talked about red light. You're a fan of red light. What do you think of like PEMF and like pulse wave beds to, to really repair the damage that Wi-Fi is doing? Yeah, I think, you know, just as it can be, uh, the pulse fields can be damaging, they can also, you know, use them to be beneficial, but it has to be very specific, used in a very specific way. I mean, the pulsed electromagnetic uh, frequencies they're even an FDA approved therapy for like growing bone in the right for things. osteoporosis and yeah. fractures. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the, the disclaimer with that is you're not supposed to use that if you have cancer because mm -hmm. it can proliferate cell growth. Mm -hmm. And so there's this, this idea that, you know, if, if you do have cancer, it can actually maybe even, you know, make your cancer grow mm -hmm. and, and be more aggressive. So um, I, I kind of have this, a, a perspective more of like let's just recreate this natural environment and let the body do its thing mm -hmm. and uh and so that's what we kind of do with with the way that we shield the rooms is we're we're essentially wrapping our entire room in earth energy because it's grounded paint grounded canopy mm -hmm. or whatever and then we're blocking out all the the non-native frequencies that we never were exposed to before yeah. so um, and then your, your body can get into that parasympathetic state at night. Yeah. The glymphatic system can do its work in detoxing the brain. 
and everything just works so much better. And you can actually see the the difference in if you're tracking this. Like I, I have an aura ring. Yeah. And a lot of my clients have those and, and the patients of the doctors that we work with and they see a noted difference in their deep sleep yeah. and and uh, the amount of t the number of times that they're waking up reduces and that sort of thing. Oh, so cool. So cool. Well, this was amazing. And I, before we finish up, I always, one of the things that we love on in the Resetter movement is we love working with people who are on a mission to save the world. And so if you had one message for the world, like if you could shout one thing from the, the top of the highest mountain in the world, what would that be? What would you want to get into people's brains? I just think that, you know, we walk around so often down the street and go grocery shopping, go about our normal everyday life. And we're kind of asleep to the idea of this gift of life that we have and the people that are around us and, and their situations. And so, you know, often I'll be going around doing my normal thing and not realizing that I'm overlooking people. I think just kind of exuding that love for your fellow brother and sister that's that are just around you uh, and sm smiling at them and giving them them that, you know, that glow. Yeah. That's how we're going to spread the message of health and wellness. I think that's how this whole paradigm is going to shift is if we have this uh, contagious smile, that's, that's this healing energy. I think that's really something that if all of us are exuding that we're going to change the world with that. And then, the skeptics will open up their hearts and their minds and start to understand some of these uh, truths because they're innate truths that are locked inside of each person. Yep. We just have to figure out how to unlock those things. And so that would be the number one message I would share. I love that. I love that. We have um, uh, shirts that we wear here in our office and I wear them on my YouTube videos that says, be kind. Because I think at the end of the day, the most important thing is exactly what you said, that we show up with compassion and love and kindness for all humanity. And when that will heal more than anything on this planet. So I, I couldn't agree more. I'll send you a shirt. I'll send you a be kind. Oh, great. Cool. You can wear it around. But it, I absolutely agree with that. I, I, we just really need to reprioritize how we take care of each other. And it's so much easier to be kind than to be grumpy with somebody so much easier so love that yeah thank awesome. you brian this was awesome and you've enlightened me i can't wait to go home tonight and tell my husband we're going to start shielding the room and <laughs> all right sounds can't good wait, can't wait to dive into your website and just so grateful for what you're doing i really appreciate you taking the time to educate us yeah happy to do that yeah awesome thank you and enjoy that new baby boy oh we will thank yeah. you uh-huh